Hi everyone, new project today. I'm going to make a, a bash plate for my uh, 250 road trail bike. Now it does have a, a plate underneath, but yeah, it's not the greatest. I want to put something a little more sturdy under there. Um, so uh, now I'll show you what we're going to do. Okay, I've got this piece of old checker plate that I picked up maybe 20 years ago. It's been thrown out at work. I knew one day it would come in handy for something and today that, that something is the, uh, the bash plate. So basically what I've done is I've got a rough sketch here of my frame. So from where my, my bolts are on my foot pegs there, um, that's where I'm measuring it from. So if I come along 260 on my bike, 260 mil on my bike, that roughly takes me to where the frame starts to turn up. Then my next measurement along is 220 before it changes direction again and then I've got the final run of 140. So I've also got a cross measurement so from foot pegs from foot peg to foot peg or 280 from where that first change in direction takes place I've got a width of 200 and then finally at the upper part of my frame I've got 60 mil so I should have enough for what I've got to do so I'm just starting to mark things out now I found a center line on this piece here and I wanted to obviously not start from the edge here because what I need to, to do when I cut this out is I've got to have like these these flanges, these ears that wrap up around the frame and the motor. They're not huge, but um, and they won't be round like this. They'll be sort of more right angles, so it's easier to bend. And yeah, so I've I've left enough. On each side so I can divide my my 60 my 200 and my 280 from the center line out and then down here where that flange is going to be I'll have enough meat left over to bend the edges up to give me that um, that side protection I need for the engine casing so I've started here I've started with my 140 millimeter um, length so this would be the upper part of the frame and then we'll come down and then we'll get to our next our next uh, bend at 220 so I'm just going to mark out the 220 and the 260 and then we'll come back okay as you can see I've got it marked out now so we've got our, our 280 here we've got our 200 here and then we've got our 60 so that's our three sections so under the under the engine where it first turns up and then on the upright of the frame and one thing I'm going to suggest is that if you're using aluminium give it a good wipe down with some I don't know some Windex or something like that prior to using your sharpie because it doesn't like to right doesn't like to mark on the on the aluminium if it's dirty okay so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work out how to make these flaps on the side so I've got to go back to the bike and take a couple of measurements off the frame and see how much of a return I want to have and the, the return should only probably run from about the midpoint here to to this section here because you can't you can't turn it up on this section because you've got your foot pegs and um, gear selector so it has to be it sort of has to be flanged out here in these two front sections okay so as you can see we've got to come out and slightly up here so this this is where our first turn takes place just at this um this bolt here that's holding the uh, original plate on so that's a good um 
that's a good indicator of of um, of where to make your your, your bend. Um, the other thing you can do is take your plate off, and that will give you some pretty close dimensions. But with mine, it doesn't go all the way up the frame where I'm wanting to take it up to here. So it it would only give me a partial template for what I'm doing. So I'm just going to put the camera down for a second. I'm hoping that my angle's right on the camera. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to measure from the engine case down to the frame. So I've roughly got, I'd always do it the awkward way too. So let's have a look here. So going from that first bolt, I've got about 90, let's say 100, because I can always trim some off the top should I need to, and with it coming out on an angle, it's going to clear the engine casing anyway. So if I go 100 off that off that first bend, I should pretty much be right. Like I can keep it 100 here too, because that'll come out, and then here I can lessen it. I probably don't want it to be 100 here, probably want to cut that down to about... I'm guessing maybe maybe 60 so let's go and have a, a go at it and see what we can come up with okay so I'm gonna mark I'm gonna mark me hundred here and here and then we'll do the same on this side so I'm gonna come under off here and 100 off here now I did say here we're going to go a little bit less so from, the, from this one we'll go 60 and the only reason we're going less is because the frame is thinner and we'll go 60 and then that will run from from the 100 down to the 60 100 to the 60. Poor old Sharpie's starting to give out. Now I've never done one of these before so this is all experimental for me. Now you can buy these things for around anywhere from around $72 Australian up to God whatever you want to pay for one. I've seen them go as high as $300. So yeah. What I might do here just just for the moment because I don't know what how I'm going to cut this. Um, I might just do a nice little curve there but just just to give myself enough enough meat what I'll do is I'll just bring this back in on a on a tapered angle like that for now and then as my brain starts to kick into gear I might come up with something nice you want to try and keep um, curved corners if you can so it lessens the chance of cracking. Now I don't have a TIG, so I can't actually um, weld any of this. So anything I do has to be bent. It may mean I have to make a cut in here and then these two sections will overlap, but that's fine. I have a riv nut set, so I can always put a riv nut. I don't know which side it'll work on, but let's say I put a riv nut into this section and then I can drill a hole through here and bolt bolt the two pieces together, which isn't a bad idea. Um, sort of the cheats way if you don't have a welder. So this looks all elaborate. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's the right shape I need. If it's not, I don't know what shape I do need. 
so yeah I'm guessing we need to cut along this line here and along this line and able to be able to fold these out same on the other side and then we do our, our fold here we do our fold here and then that should that should be enough now the other thing I've got to remember too is where my foot pegs are I need a tab to come off here because I've got to bend that to stick the plate behind the foot pegs foot peg bolts so I'm going to go measure up the height of the frame now and then I'll measure out and make that tab okay so the dimensions I got my foot pegs also tie in at a junction of the frame there so I've actually got three bolts and the length I've allowed is 120 mil and my frame is 40 millimeters high so I now have to square this out to make that flap to bolt it up behind the uh, the foot pegs okay because we've got lots of extra lines here what I'm gonna do is I've got a bit of um mineral turpentine I'm just gonna go around and scrub out all the lines I don't need and just leave my template there all the inner lines here that are inside the pattern I'm gonna leave on but all the external lines I'm gonna get rid of okay I've got everything marked out the way I think I want it so this one here I've only got to sort of cut the outside along here but I should be able to bend these two pieces along this line as one piece um, so I put all, all my I'll need to cut here too I think need to make a small cut there I'll need to cut here I'll need to cut here and the same on the other sides um, everything else is just bends now the way I'm hoping I can bend it is um, just with a just with a rubber mallet a uh, big rubber mallet <laughs> and probably the edge of my trailer um, it's big enough I should be able to just lay this lay this over the um, the trailer and over the edge of it clamp it down and then just hit it along the lines that I, I need to bend this haven't yet decided whether I want the smooth side out or the checker plate out so um yeah i'll stew over that whilst i have a cup of coffee <laughs> okay i've got a couple of bash plates here that i was sort of basing my um my bash plate off so this one was specific to a crf 150 which dimensionally is pretty close to my 250 so as you can see, it's got the wings out the side here. But this is a very basic one. This is only worth about $70. Then we've got, I've got a picture of an original CRF plate. So that's sort of similar to what I've got on my bike at the moment, except this one's much thicker. But as you can see here, it doesn't protect the frame. So, and then we've got like, this one here this is like full-on overbuilt probably <laughs> um, it's got the massive flanges here on the side um, what I'm planning to do with mine is uh, these are the foot pegs on a CRF um, but I have like three bolts here so I'm planning to turn the edge up here on the plate and stick it in behind these three bolts and that'll give me um, a good place to bolt to at the back and then I've got a couple of bolts under this section here before it changes direction so I can bolt across there too and then up here I've pretty much got the same setup I've got a, a couple of uh, bolts here that I can bolt to but this has got a really big flange on the side so I'm trying to build, I guess, a hybrid 
of of all these bash plates and what I'll do is I'll just trim it back I'll just trim it back to suit my bike as you can see here this has got some captive nuts in it by the looks of it um, I'm not sure why you'd have those but they could be just spacer spacer tubes they look like they're hex hexagonal so um, but yeah as I was saying on the sides here when I I cut the slots in there for the directions and and possibly one of these folds over onto the next one I can riv nut this plate and put the bolt in through this this plate into the riv nut okay I've got the pattern cut out I actually used a jigsaw with an aluminium blade but I found I kept getting like bound up and I couldn't work out why so okay just before the battery went flat on the camera um, I was saying that I was using a jigsaw to cut the panel out and it was binding well one thing I found that was really good to basically get it to cut through that aluminium like a hot knife through butter was I just used a bit of um, RP7 WD40 CRC uh, all the same stuff and I just I, I put a, I sprayed a little bit on the blade and then I just sprayed along the line that I was gonna cut and it's unbelievable how easy it went through that um that aluminium at one stage I, I just couldn't push it it's like the um, it's like the base of the jigsaw was getting stuck to the aluminium but it yeah, a bit of CRC and it made all the difference. Okay, not sure where I got up to before the uh, camera went flat. Uh, but it's pretty much all finished. So I bent everything up on all the lines. I used the corner of the bench here and the, the trailer as well because this trailer's a steel, steel frame trailer so it's, it's nice and sturdy. So I was able to use that to sort of bend stuff over and had a couple of hard ones here, these front ones. So what I did is I just got a cold chisel and I just sort of tapped along the line to not so much weaken it, but to score it. And then I had a, a pair of um, welding clamps and I just wide jaw welding clamps and I put them on and I just bent it over. So at the moment, it's just held together by self tapping screws if I can find someone that can weld this up for me, I'll be able to trim, be able to trim a few things back here, and actually weld it along the seams and get it looking nice. But for what it is, and for what it cost me, which was nothing, um, it's pretty sturdy, and it'll do the job. Um, I still have to drill the holes in here to bolt these two sections behind the um, the foot pegs and then up the front here um, I have to make a little bracket to come off here and under here in this section there's two bolts in the frame that hold the original uh, bash guard on there so I'm just going to drill them out. So I'll have um, six mounting points. And that probably took me a couple of hours to put together. I know it looks pretty crude at the moment. But once, once everything's cut properly and welded up, it'll, it'll look pretty good. So yeah, I've just had to leave, leave some of these sections overlapping to get a screw in. Uh, this is good too because should I have needed to make an adjustment anywhere I can just take that out and re-drill it or re-tap it in the, in the right spot. Now the only thing that I had to end up doing was it was 40 millimeters too long in this end so I just I cut 40 mil off it but it was probably better I made it longer than and, than too short so yeah bonus and I think just in here there was a couple of bits I think 
I'm not sure if it was this edge here this came straight up and I just had to cut that off uh, to get it to sort of fit a little bit better but all the edges are nicely rounded on it so there's no sharp right angle edges everything's rounded I guess because this bench was rounded and the edge of the trail is rounded too so um, next stage will be to get it mounted up and then when it's all mounted up and it, it works good then I will find out where my drain plug is underneath the bike and um, then I'll use a hole saw then I'll cut a hole out in this so I can get to my drain plug then once that's finished I'll give it a bit of a sand and a polish and see how it comes up okay um, I've just used a hockey strap for the moment just to sort of hold things in place but as you can see here this foot this flange flange on both sides that's got to go up behind these bolts so I've got to take this off and it turns out that these foot pegs actually hold the two sections of frame together as well there's a bolt at the front here too so I actually need to put three three holes in that plate because the back is a little low at the moment um, but as you can see it fits really nice here too it's probably just a little bit a little bit off because it's being held in place with, with that strap but oh, as you can see it still moves so uh, yeah it's not too bad I sort of like it you know because it's I've just done it on the fly and I haven't got any you know proper tools I didn't have a, a, a folding brake to, to bend it and I haven't got a welder to weld it so what I've done is not too bad at this at this stage and I think that'll uh, I think by the time everything's said and done that'll be perfect it'll look a little tighter and a little neater too because when this goes behind this foot peg it's gonna come up and um, and this will sit a little closer to the engine casing so it will uh, it won't look as bulky it'll sort of hug the bike more so yeah I'm not gonna do anything today with it I'll have a, a crack at it tomorrow and uh, see how we go okay so today we're gonna unbolt these foot pegs and push the panel up mark the holes drill it and yeah sort of complete it good thing is my best mate um i was telling him about this and he said bring it into our work and we'll weld it up for you they build caravans so they they're always welding out up aluminium frames and they said yeah provided the job's not too big um we'll weld it up for you so today i'm going to trim trim up everything that i need to trim up and have it ready for them and uh yeah we can we can do it properly so I'm, I'm i'm looking forward to that that'd be good okay i've got um everything mounted now so foot pegs going okay i've made a bracket for here so this will get this will get tigged on as well and then these self-tapping screws can come out along with all these ones here so yeah pretty good fit i did make a mistake on this side I'll be the first to admit my mistakes i uh i drilled the hole in the wrong spot but we'll just fill that just tig across there and clean it up a little bit but it's not bad it turned out pretty good okay i made the front support for this the only thing is i've got to get a new um engine mount to frame bolt because this now is a little bit too short so I've got to go an extra maybe 20 mil long so I've even up all the sides as well I just made a cardboard template of this side which looked better 
and I just transcribed it onto that side and fixed it up. So there's my little mistakes there with the holes. So we just gotta zap them up. Okay, I ended up getting the uh, bash plate welded up. Um, it's not pretty, but it's uh, you know I gotta be grateful that I, I got it done for nothing. So yeah, it's all it's all mounted now. It's amazing how things can shift. I, uh, when I went to bolt it up today after it was welded, the bracket that I made in here was way too long. So I don't know what the story with that was, but I ended up cutting it back and it fits like a glove now. Fits good on both sides. Got my little mistakes fixed. Where I drilled those, uh, those holes a little bit too high. But yeah, everything's uh, everything's good. One other thing I had to do was I had to get some longer bolts for here. Because with the bash plate on, I didn't have enough thread coming through here. So I got a I got a, a bolt that was 20 mil longer for the front. Then what I did is I took that original bolt and I put it at the back here. Because the frame's a lot thinner here. So that suited that perfectly. And I just picked up another bolt of the same length, which I think was about 55 mil, something like that. But yeah, everything sort of worked out really well on both sides. So that's all in. This was a bit of a nightmare trying to get in um, to put the nut on, but I, I found a way to do it. So. Yeah, should I ever need to pull it apart in the future, I know how to get the nut back on. These two at the back here weren't so bad, just the front one. Being under the brake pedal there, there's not a lot of, a lot of room to get in there. Well, that was my um, effort at making a bash plate for the bike. I'm fairly happy with it. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes when I take it out on the track and... and into the bush and see if it holds up. Till next time guys, cheers.